I figure out who, who come in with some 90s R&B jam. Kind of get, you know, get in the mood. Do a little reminiscing. Since y'all playing catch up with me today, I figured we go a little bit back in time, go back in time. This is a jam back in the day. Quick key sweat had people making babies. People was making babies. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Let me stop. Let me stop. Welcome everyone. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Takesha, but I go by Keisha. I am an independent travel agent with Travel with Flair. I'm also um, one half of Makeup and Tea with my sister. We will be doing a video soon of our review of our last uh, few trips. Um, Y'all, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, um, so... Hopefully we going we going to get this thing rocking. It's been a minute. I know y'all haven't seen me in a long time. I am sorry for that. It's been so much stuff going on and I promise I'm going to try to do better. Um but it, it is what it is. I, I definitely want to play catch up with you all. Excuse my stuff in the background. I'm trying to get my life together back there, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm trying to get my life together. Let me do my little virtual background. Hopefully that will, um, that'll work. If not, we're just going to make it do what it do. We're just going to do what we can. Um, let me tell you, we are now in obviously 2023 and, and, um, I, I just have to say, y'all, I, I, it's been 2022 has definitely been a busy year for me. Um, I know y'all, it's probably been longer than that since you all have seen me anywhere. Um, so let me let's 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 get into it. Let's dive into it. So last year, um, I traveled almost every single month. Um, I was uploading stuff on my Facebook page on. Um, my TikTok, as well as my Instagram pages. Um, I'm trying to do better with putting stuff on my business pages, but you know, sometimes it's, it's so easy to put stuff on your personal, um, your personal pages. And y'all, I, I, I'm gonna have to do better. I'm gonna have to do better. I am a work in progress. Okay. I am a work in progress. So we, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Um, and I hate saying um all the time, but apparently I keep doing it. So I'm going to have to stop because that's not cute. <laughs> so let me get started. Let's start with January of last year. So January of last year, uh, I went on a cruise. Uh, it was my first cruise. I feel like as a travel agent, you know, if you're going to sell something, you need to at least have some experience to know what it is you're selling so that you can give your clients like the best experience. Uh, so I was like, okay, I never really wanted to do a cruise. I, because I prefer all inclusives, that doesn't mean uh, cruises are not good. It was just that I was so paranoid about um, <laughs> getting on the ship, getting off the ships at different ports, and then having to rush back to make sure you were not a peer runner. You didn't want to be one of those peer runners where, oh, you you missing your um, you missing your your ship. I didn't want to be that person. So um, needless to say, I finally did a cruise, y'all. I finally did one. And so with that being said, with me doing the cruise, um, yeah, I'm trying to get this camera together. It is not being respectful. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do if we can get this thing together. Let's see. Here we go. We're back. We're, I'm sorry, y'all. We're back at technical difficulties. See, that's why I got to keep doing this and keep practicing. So, so I did my first cruise and it was with the uh, Carnival. I did the Carnival Breeze. I really liked that ship. I uh, had a great time. January was an awesome time. Um, I'm going to be honest. I prefer when I go on vacation. I'm not around a bunch of kids, preferably not 
no kids at all. Not that I don't love children. I do love children. I work with them every day with my full-time job. So I'm always with the babies. So because you're with kids all the time, when you want to go on a cruise, you want to be around kids all the time. So I don't, I don't want to hear them screaming, yelling, or laughing. Like, I don't want to see any kids. I want to take a break from them and them take a break from me, whether they know me or not. So I did a cruise in January. And then February, uh, I did another cruise on Carnival. So the first cruise I did, like I said, I did the Carnival Breeze. The second one, I did the Carnival Valor. Um, a, a little bit older ship. Uh, I was spoiled by the Breeze because some things were updated um, and newer as far as technology, the rooms and spaces, and, and some of the offerings that they had on the ship was completely different. And then um, February, there were more kids on the on the ship. That was that was a great experience. And then February, no, that was February. So then March, March, I was supposed to go to Philadelphia, D.C. and Delaware. Um, I was going to go see my brothers. Y'all, right before I went, that Friday, I was feeling really horrible. It was during our spring break uh, week. I was feeling like really, really bad. I was supposed to meet with um, the girls that I mentor that Saturday. And I was like, because I felt so bad, I couldn't break my temperature that I had. I was running a fever. And I was like, let me just do a Zoom. Let me just do a Zoom so I can still meet with them, see their faces and talk to them before we, you know, for let out for spring break. And y'all, I felt so miserable. My temperature stayed between 104 and 105. And I'm like, that's really different, you know, dangerous. And I was trying to alternate between medications and Tylenol and all this other stuff. It just would not break. So I went ahead and went to the quick medical. And for those of you that don't know, I was like, what is the quick medical? The ER or urgent care? I went to urgent care because it's cheaper. So I went to urgent care and y'all... I was over here like, I hope I don't have COVID. I hope I don't have COVID. Mm -mm, I didn't have COVID. I had an upper respiratory virus, flu, and pneumonia all at the same time. Who does it? Who does it? I was supposed to fly out the next day that Sunday to go on my trip. So I had to cancel my reservations, call my supervisor, and be like, hey, instead of showing me vacation this week, you have to show me sick because I got all this stuff going on. So I'm not going to be in. And it took me a minute to uh get over having all of that going on and i already have asthma so that affecting my lungs and my lungs are already not being the best in the best shape um it took me a while to just get to where i could breathe right and normally and just feel better and so i chalked it up and i was like okay lord you're keeping me here for a reason i don't need to go for a reason but i really felt bad because i really want to spend time with my brothers uh I had lost both of my stepdads. So that being said, uh, that's another thing that, you know, I have been going through uh, in 2020. I lost my stepdad that was current. My mom was currently married to. They were married to married for 17 years. Um, he was diagnosed with cancer on um, May 26th and he died a month and a day later on June 27th. And so we had that loss. And then um, a little over about a year and a half after that, my stepdad that raised me since I was five, I still have a relationship with my biological father. I'm blessed with three dads. I was blessed with three moms. I'll tell you about that later. Y'all like, how y'all do that? Well, because they're my parents. And so, you know, when my mom was married to my stepdad before he passed, now she's a widow. Um, they have been married for 17 years. And then my stepdad that raised me had been in my life since I was five. I'm currently 45. I'll be 46 this year. No, I don't mind telling you because I look good for my age. Huh, these jeans are good. Um, so he had all, he was my daddy. He was my daddy. And so, you know, we had recently lost him. And so I wanted to spend time with um, my brothers that lived in that area. And so it was really a downer because I was like, I was really looking forward to it. I really wanted to see my brothers and it just did not work out. Everybody named mama texting. Um, so that just sucked. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to do something different. So that was March. Um, April, I was feeling better. I went to Vegas uh, and I was there for about a week, had a really great time. I love Vegas, y'all. If, if you haven't realized, like this picture that you see in my virtual is South Point in Las Vegas. If you've never stayed at South Point, I highly recommend that hotel. 
Um, I've stayed at several hotels and I'm going, we're going to talk about that later. I'm going to do more videos where I do reviews of like the different places I've gone. I'm going to post videos of room tours that I've done, um, sites, pictures, everything. I plan on uploading those things to kind of give you guys an idea of some options and places you can stay. It's that's affordable that you, you can make it happen. It can happen. You can have a great time and not have to spend a bunch of money and come out of your pocket. So went to vegas um that may i want to say was may may or june i know my months y'all um we went to cabo had a great time went with my um group that i'm a part of called chocolate travelers you can find them on facebook and chocolate travelers is for people of all chocolate mm -hmm. milk chocolate white chocolate dark chocolate and we will add toppings of caramel and everything else on there, <laughs> with caramel and mocha. Um, and so we we went to Cabo, had a really great time. Um, I plan on doing a review of that. Great, great time. So went to Cabo, and then um, I lay low for a minute because I end up having to have a re a breast reduction. I had to get a re uh, reduction. Best thing I could have ever 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 done i feel so much lighter as far as my boobages um y'all i was carrying around a whole baby i was carrying around a newborn on my chest so after i did my surgery and went back for my um you know my checkup you know see how i'm doing and how my stitches and everything is going and incisions stuff like that y'all she told me she took six pounds and three ounces of breast tissue. That's a whole newborn. No wonder my back was hurting. I've been carrying around somebody else's child because it ain't mine. My child is grown. So I've been carrying around one of y'all's kids this entire time. But don't worry, I did drop them off. So I'm not, now I can buy regular bras. I can go to Target. I can go to Walmart. I can go to regular stores like regular people and not spend 50 60 70 80 dollars for a bra because i went from an l yes they do come in l and they come in larger sizes to like i'm between a double d and a triple d now it's so much yeah some of y'all be like oh that's big not when you it's is not when you were l i was an l so that ain't i'm not big anymore my hugs don't even feel the same i feel weird when i hug people and i'm still not used to the my space that i have that's reduced now that I'm closer to people because I don't have these, you know, I don't have these big boobs anymore. So did that. And then um, I end up going to Vegas again for a travel agent conference and um, had a really, really great time. So travel agent conference. Then my sister and I went to Lake Tahoe. Y'all, if you have never been to Lake Tahoe, highly recommend going to lake tahoe we went at the end of september and um it wasn't to avoid crowds but it ended up being the perfect time to go because we avoided that summer crowd because they have two seasons of tourism heavy tourism and that's obviously the winter time for skiing and snowboarding and stuff like that and then you have your summer crowd because they have the, that beautiful lake oh my gosh i'm gonna i'm gonna go more in depth probably do that uh, review with my sister she was there and i feel it'd be only fair to not only give you my opinion from a travel agent standpoint and give you some tips but also let her give her view her view from just being somebody that's not in travel agent uh, industry and let you see like how she viewed things because our opinions may differ and she can give you a completely different um, perspective of things that she saw and she liked. And then of course I can give you tips based off of my professional job on the side, as far as being a travel agent. And like I said, I just love to travel. So we're going back. So I'm going to tell you in a little bit what we're going to do for 2023. So went to Lake Tahoe then for my birthday, um, I turned 45 and I was like earlier, um, the, in the year, I was like, I want to, I want to do something big. I don't want to have a birthday party. And it's okay when other people have that. I enjoy going to them. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy going to them. But for me, I did not want to spend my 45th birthday spending money, me spending money on having a big shindig for other people to come to celebrate me. I'm spending money for other people to celebrate me. And then a lot of times 
not that you're necessarily looking for gifts. However, too, when people come in, they don't bring you anything. Or some people bring you stuff and some people don't. But y'all don't act like y'all don't know. Y'all know. Y'all know how people are. They'll come eat your food, take a to-go plate, a to-go cup, and to-go silverware. And don't give you a card or a bottle of wine or, you know, whatever. A $10 gift card. They don't do it. Not saying everybody I associate with will do that, but let's just keep it real. You have people out there that, that don't. And so I was like, you know, I want to spend that same money on spoiling myself and creating an experience of something I said I always wanted to do and then do it. Just do it and and knock something on my bucket list. Go ahead and start knocking some of those big items on my bucket list. So what I decided to do was I went to Dubai. Oh, I want to go back. I plan on going back and I probably end up doing it like in 2025. Uh, but I plan on going back. I did. Um, I left October the 24th. And I came back November the 1st. So that was uh, nine days, eight nights uh, thereabouts. I had round trip airfare and I stayed in an all-inclusive resort at the Ryu. Uh, really had a really great time. I cannot wait to give you guys a full review of that. I'm actually going to do a video review and I'm typing things up on my website. I'm still not through because it's so much information. Um, just typing it up and make sure I give you... Um, a real honest, in-depth opinion and things that you need to know that I wasn't prepared for uh, when I went. I did my research. I talked to people that went and I ended up finding out it was things that they didn't tell me that I wish they had have, you know, would have told me that would have alleviated some fear and some insecurities. And I didn't get that. In a way, I'm glad I didn't because my eyes was open to the experience because of the unknown, if that makes sense. So I went there. Um, that was at the end of October, like I said, the 1st of November. And then I went to Atlanta um, for Thanksgiving. And then I went to Atlanta again for New Year's. And now we're into 2023. So, so far we are in May and I have been on three cruises so far. I went on... Um, the Carnival Liberty, I believe, in January. And then I went on the Carnival Glory. I think that's the order in which I went in. I'm Y'all, that's how much I move around and I'm working all the time. So forgive me, but I did both of those cruise ships for real, January and February. Then in March, I did another cruise, but this time I did it with Virgin Voyages out of Miami. Virgin Voyages stole my heart. 18 years and older, you must have a passport. The ambiance was nice. There were no kids. Carnival uh, in February traumatized me only in the sense that, you know, when we went, we knew because I went with a group. One of my cousins was celebrating her birthday. So it was a big group of us, family and friends. And we had a great time together. But what we we knew it was Mardi Gras weekend that we were getting there and the ship would leave. We knew that. That wasn't a problem. We didn't know that the kids were out of school for a week doing Mardi Gras. And so with that being the case, it was so many kids on the ship, y'all. So many kids on the ship. And one of the things we kept running across was, y'all know how hard it is. If you've been on a cruise ship, it's hard enough to get an elevator. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes, but those kids was pushing every single button on every single elevator, I kid you not. And it was taking forever for you to get an elevator to come to you to get to, you know, if you're on the third or fourth deck going to eat and now you want to go up to your deck on deck eight or five, it was taking forever for those elevators to get to you. So that was one thing that I was just like so over. And then when I went to Virgin Voyages, I think me dealing with that with all the kids, um, in February, made Virgin Voyages that much better when I went in March. Y'all, I can't wait to do my review of that one. Um, I highly recommend you do Virgin Voyages. So that was in March. So I did a week in Vegas. And then the next week, like literally back to back, they seriously they were back to back trips. I did a week in Miami. Loved it. And um, as of this week, I went to, on Mother's Day, I went to Cancun, Mexico, and just got back 
mm, was it when, Thursday morning? Because we I didn't get home till like one o'clock in the morning. Flight kept getting delayed. So um got back, enjoyed that, went with my sister, one of my sisters again. I have three sisters, went with one of the same one again, um, to that there. And so Memorial weekend, I plan on going to Atlanta. And then um what else? I plan on, I have a trip planned for Vegas again. This time it's going to be for fun and uh, professional because I'm going to another travel agent conference. Then, then uh, I have another cruise in August and this time it'll be on the Carnival Dream. It's going to be a group cruise. I'm going with my family and then I actually have another group that I didn't put together, but another close friend of mine that's also a travel agent, she put together. So I'll have some friends on that cruise as well. So it'll be nice to be able to socialize and interact with both groups while I'm there. And so also my sister and I plan on going back to Lake Tahoe again. We really had a really great time. And, um, and my hope is that for my birthday this year that I go to Germany. I don't have any plans as of yet for uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, I may, you know, stay here and just chill for a minute. Now I'm working on 2024, ironically, I'm working on 2024. I already have a cruise, uh, set up, um, that I'm going on. And then I'm also looking forward to possibly, and I'm possibly I'm going on Virgin Voyages again next year. I just have to figure out when next year I'm going on Virgin voyages and there's some other trips that people have been telling me that they want to go on so i'm trying to figure out when to schedule those trips and you know kind of get that because you got to think about pricing and holidays and stuff like that and what's going to make sense for people's pockets because i try not to count other people's coins and dictate what they can spend but i wanted to make sense and i want their money to be able to stretch so they can get you know more stuff you know bang for their buck one of my things I always say, I try to make broke look good and I try to be bougie on a budget. That is that is my ministry. That is my ministry. And so uh, trying to just, you know, do all of that kind of stuff. And as y'all see, like, I'm busy and I stay booking clients, which is a blessing. So while I'm on my trips, I still get an opportunity to most of the time I try to, you know, I try to enjoy my vacations, but I also try to talk to my clients, give them insight and information and take care of them while I'm gone. And of course, I do Facebook lives while I'm on my trips because I want people to, to be able to see uh, what the environment looks like, what the amenities look like. And pictures are good, videos are even better. So, and then give them the opportunity to ask me questions, answer questions, and give them some travel tips about some things that they never did um, think about, or um, think, you know, hey, I didn't realize I could, I could do that. I didn't realize that was an, an option. So, I love doing the Facebook lives, and I have a few of my friends are like, "Girl, you're on vacation. Why are you working?" Well, Facebook Live is not like working to me. I enjoy interacting with people and I do it when I know I have time to do it, when it's not taken away from me going and doing something else. I still do my activities and my excursions, but I also rest. I People are like, you don't, you don't go on vacation to rest? Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell y'all something. Y'all go on vacation to do whatever you want to do. It is your money. You spend your money how you want to. If you want to rest on your vacation, you rest on your vacation. If you want to sleep every day, you sleep every day. If you want to party, click, kick it, gamble, club, what, eat. That's what you do. That's what you spent your money for. Do what you need to do. And what people don't understand is like when I'm not traveling, I work seven days a week. Like, And I ain't even I'm not even talking about travel agent work. I work seven days a week. I do my regular job during the week. My regular job also requires me to meet with the girls that I mentor on the weekends, on Saturdays. So I do six hours on Saturdays. And then on Sundays, I actually work off duty. Um, if y'all don't know, like police officers do like extra. Yes, I'm a police officer. We do extra jobs like security for places. And I do that on Sunday. So I literally work every day of the week. And that's not including things that I have to do job wise after hours. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't always get off at four o'clock and then that's the end of my day. I may have to go work like I've been doing, you know, we, Lord have mercy, we got hit by a tornado. Devastating. And um, because I'm a police officer, we've been working tornado detail. And at first it was mandatory. 
now y'all i'm sorry my um i got emails coming in and my group chat is just like blowing up i'm gonna try to i'm gonna mute that so i stop getting the notifications anyway so headed where we can volunteer for it and y'all y'all know how many i got y'all heard me tell you all these trips and i'm working on next year so i'm trying to get all my coins together stuff like that and my you know my travel agent commission that goes towards future trips that way it don't but messes it doesn't mess up my regular budget that comes out of my regular check. So I'm trying to live my best life. And when I go places, enjoy stuff. But traveling is my self-care. That is my peace. And so that, that allows me to get away and escape. Uh, it's like, you know, a lot of people see you. They see your Facebook posts. They see you smiling. They see you laughing. But at the end of the day, they don't know what's going on in the background. They don't know if you have health issues and things like that that could be going on. You just never know. Financial difficulties, traumas, things happen. I'm dealing with, you know, right after my stepdad passed, two and a half months later, my grandmother passed. And so I had these, you know, when you look at the timeline, when my uh, stepdad, Michael, passed uh, June of 2020, five months later, a week after Thanksgiving, we only had two weeks warning when my uncle passed. And he back same thing my stepdad did. They both passed from um, pancreatic cancer. And um, that takes you out really, really quick. I want to say it was pancreatic cancer. And he found out the week before Thanksgiving that he had it. And he passed two weeks later. That was devastating. And it was even harder for uh, my mom because she was close to him. That was her sibling that she was the closest to. And then he was her last surviving. Uh, well, one of he's 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 one of two last surviving siblings. And y'all, that ring on my tell you when folks was walking by your house. And so she had just moved here after my stepdad passed because she had lived out of state, and we wanted her to be close to us. She's older, and if anything happened, we wanted to make sure that we were able to be able to take care of her, get to her, do whatever we need to do. She didn't get the opportunity to see him when she moved back because we were in the middle of COVID still, and you know you couldn't do hospital visits and stuff like that. So she didn't get the opportunity to have that face to face, one on one time to say goodbye to him. So she dealt with that five months after her husband died. And then a year later, year and a half later, my stepdad, who we call daddy baby, he passed. And I, my mom and him were still best friends. Even my stepdad, Michael, that passed, he was good friends with daddy baby. And so that hit my mom even harder. And then two and a half months later, but almost my grandmother passed. And so it was like back to back to back to back. And then, um, so, you know, that was a lot. And I, I'm not, I didn't even tell you about July 21st, 2018, when a tree fell on my house while me and my daughter were in to be asleep. So, so many things have been going on and, um, and it's not an excuse, but just life happens. Life happens. And my mom has, uh, Alzheimer's and, um, if you've ever dealt with that disease, it is a horrible, horrible, horrible disease. And my grandmother, on my mom's side, she had it. And um, I helped my uncle and my aunt with doing things with them to help take care of her. So I got to experience that with her. And then my grandfather on my dad's side, he had it and he passed three years ago. And so seeing it up close, but still kind of at a distance, if you will, that was hard. But seeing my mom go through that, that's even worse because when your parent no longer remembers your name, and um, uh, you can't if you, if you if you if you're really close to your parent and they're your best friend and you're used to talking to them every single day and having conversations with them all the time and them being a the sounding board and you no longer have that. That's really hard. That's really, really hard. And my daughter has been so great with helping to step up and step in to help alleviate a lot of the stress that I was dealing with, with having to have, uh, take care of her. And so um, my escape is my travel. Um, and it allows me to see God, if you will, in, in his diff in different manifestations of himself. Because um, think about it, Vegas is not Arkansas. Arkansas is a ton of beautiful trees and mountains and, and, and lakes and rivers and ocean well not oceans duh i wish <laughs> but 
but it's 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 an it's the natural state. And then you got Vegas, and I'm using those two extremes because Vegas is desert and it's rocks and it's canyons and it's mountaintops and depending on the time of year, it's snow on the mountains and stuff like that. So those are kind of that's awesome to see. And then being able to travel to Dubai, travel over the ocean and across continents and y'all and seeing different people from other countries that's a beautiful thing and it's a blessing it reminds you too of how small we are and how big he is so i'm not trying to make this like a religious thing but at the same time i'm i'm a spiritual person and definitely not a perfect person i do cuss i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sugarcoat it i'm not gonna act like i don't i do i cuss but i know who my god is and i have a strong faith system and then i have a great support system and so I try to spend time with my parents that's still alive. My dad is still alive. My stepmom um, that he he's married to, she's still alive. They've been together for over 30 years. I lost my uh, other stepmom who he was married to prior to that. She had been in my life since birth. Y'all probably how that happened. We'll talk about that later. Um, she passed 14, about 14, 15 years ago. So I've lost three parents, but I still have three left. And y'all like, dog, six parents? Yes. Yes, six parents. We'll talk about that later. But I have six parents and I I have a great relationship with all my parents. I've had a great relationship with all my parents and I'm blessed for that. It's a, it's, it, I, I tell folks, it's kind of like a blessing and a curse because it's like, I got all this love. I got all this parental support, but I get to see death more than others when it comes to losing parent, a parent or parents. That's the hard part. That's the hard part. But grief is truly uh, an example or uh, a manifestation of how much love you have for a person and how much they've impacted your life. It's definitely a reminder of how important they are to you and help you realize the magnitude of their imprint on you and, and how they help sh you know shape you into who you are today. So that's those are some things that i've been you know having going on and um you know i'm like i said i'm i'm booked and busy busy and booked and i'm big booking other people and helping them create memories and moments that they can cherish with the people they love the most and i'm trying to encourage people to do more solo traveling like don't be afraid to do something on your own don't be afraid of yourself uh i love solo traveling most of my travel is solo. I don't mind groups, but I I love being with Keisha. I love dating myself. I love getting to know me in different environments and, and things of that nature. And I think that's extremely important because if you don't love yourself, you're not comfortable with yourself, you're not happy by yourself, you don't have peace with you you're not going to find it with anybody else. You're never going to find it with anybody else. You're going to always be struggling. And I'm in a space now where I'm like, I'm not looking for a relationship. And the Bible say who he who findeth a wife find a good thing. So it's not meant for me to go find anybody anyway. I'm supposed to be available. And so I'm traveling all over the globe. So he going to find me somewhere. And if he don't, it is what it is. Keisha going to keep traveling and doing Keisha. So... <laughs> I, but I'm so focused on getting to know me and loving me and embracing me. I'm not interested in anybody else, which is a good thing, but I'm open to it, which is a great thing. I'm open to it. I'm just not focused on it. That's not my priority. If it comes, it comes when it's supposed to come and I'll receive it. But until then, my focus is on me and making me a better person and being whole and healthy all the way around, making sure I'm healthy mentally, emotionally, getting over past scars and traumas and issues and um, walking in a better light and, and being free. Because I'm like, y'all, I'm young. I pray God bless me live a long time, long time, long time. And I retire literally in five years. If God bless me, says I will retire in five years. And so I'm like, I want to put myself in a position that where I, when I'm retired, I'm good. I'm good. Like I'm, you know, make sure your bills are paid off. You don't have ex extreme amount of debt, and I don't have to go get another job if I don't want to. 
where I can just truly enjoy retirement. We work so hard. I want what I work hard for. I want to be able to enjoy when I retire and not have to keep working, 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 working. I don't want to do that. I do not want to do that. And um, let's see. I also have received a few rewards through my job and my work with uh, my kids. Um, I got our Civic Achievement Award. Um, and that's for the work that I do with my girls. And then because I work with the Little Rock School District here. Yes, I'm in Little Rock. Um, because I work with them, I got um, their one of their volunteers in public schools uh, recognition for uh, the program that I run. And I think that's very important um, for my girls. And of course, we do volunteer work and stuff like this. So if you happen to know about some volunteer opportunities, please hit me up and let me know because I definitely want them to stay involved in the community, give back. Um, I feel like when kids are more invested in their community, that they'll take care of the community that takes care of them. So that's going on. And y'all like my t-shirt? Look, hopefully you can see my t-shirt. See, I, look, look, I got this background, but it says I stay, you don't want to show the bottom. I stay ready. <laughs> I stay ready. Like, I stay ready. I stay ready to travel. Like, I have luggage in the living room. I need to finish unpacking so I can get ready to repack. Uh, my sister's like, girl, how many pieces of luggage you have? I was like, mind your business. Mind your business. So, I stay ready. If you want a t-shirt, they're $20. Holler at me. I can get you one made. Um, so, I'm selling t-shirts and stuff like that. Supporting my daughter and her different business and uh, endeavors. And um, I feel like you should have multiple streams of income. Yeah. Millionaires don't just have their hands in one pot. They have different streams of, uh, you know, that they're they're dealing with, they're managing, and they're making money off of. And I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to just be a millionaire. I want to be a multimillionaire. It can happen. It can be done. But if I can do it quick and win a lottery, I'll take that too. <laughs> I'll take that too. Um, so I gave y'all real quick. You know, I guess 40 minutes is a quick uh, breakdown of what I've done in the past year and a half, two years, three years. So let's talk travel. If you don't have TSA pre-check, I highly recommend you get it. If you fly at least one time a year, you need to get TSA pre-check. So y'all know when y'all go in the airport, you check in your luggage, you re get ready to go through TSA and then you go into the, you know, you got that where to separate the lines. You got TSA pre-check and then you got the regular line. Then y'all go on the regular line and then we go on the TSA pre-check. I love it because we don't have to take off our shoes. I feel it's so nasty to walk around the floor on your feet, even in socks. I just, it's just disgusting. It's just disgusting. I hate when I had to do it. I love TSA because I don't have to take off my shoes for the most part. Every blue moon you run across the airport where they want you to do that. You don't take off your belt. Every blue moon you have where they want you to do that. You don't have to take your laptop um, out of your bag, which is awesome because you don't have to separate that stuff. And it expedites you typically. You typically um, don't have to, you know, do that. So, you know, with that being said... Get you some TSA pre-check. So it used to be $85 for five years. Now I believe it's like $76 for five years. The price went down. And we are always happy about a, a price change, especially when it goes down. So they lowered the price for TSA pre-check by almost $10. So I want to say it's like $9 cheaper now. Get it, y'all. It's a great investment. That's about, what, $15? Mm -hmm, almost $15 a year thereabouts. Get it, get it like $15 a year, and it's going to help expedite me being able to get you know through lines to go to my gate because y'all know how them lines be, even if you're in a small airport, it still can be ridiculous because when you're in a smaller airport, you have fewer lanes, and everybody's going through those fewer lanes. Also, so I, I upgraded myself from regular TSA, and I have global entry now. I got to use it coming back from Cabo. I mean, not Cabo. I got it um, when I went to Dubai and I was able to use it when I 
went on this trip to Cancun, coming back into the U.S. Y'all, I feel so bougie. I feel so bougie. Like, I'm, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yes. But in real life, I was just like, okay. <laughs> So Global Engine, y'all probably, how you get it in Dubai? I didn't get it in Dubai. I got it when I came back from Dubai. So you can, you fill out your application, do your information. You get what's called a conditional approval. It's not approved yet because you still have to do an, a face-to-face -face interview. And so when I tried to do the interview, y'all, the, the, the wait times at that time was ridiculous. And it was like, I did the paperwork in like June, July. They didn't have anything available close to me till like December. I kid you not, like December the sixth. And because I was going to Dubai, but you know, before December, they have where you can do interviews upon arrival at international airports, and they give you a list of the international airports where you can do your interviews up on arrival. And so mine was in Chicago O'Hare. So because there was a layover, I was going there. They did have it where I could do my interview. So when I came back from Dubai and I got to Chicago, I did my interview in person. Then you don't have to make an appointment. You just get in line and was able to get that done. And um, y'all, she told me I would hear something like later that night. I got it probably in less than an hour. And my sister, she wanted to get it done. And I was like, hey, you need to go ahead do your paperwork, get your conditional approval, see what dates they have available for your in, you know, face-to-face -face interview and see which if, if, it, if they have something sooner that's leaving, going to Cancun. If not, then we're coming back from Cancun and we go through customs, more than likely the airport we're going through, which went through St. Louis, they can do your interview there. Sure enough, they did her interview and she got her approval. He told her she was already approved, but she would get her actual approval letter and information an hour later. And she did. Now she's actually excited that the next time we go on an international trip, she'll be able to use that global entry, but also on all um, domestic trips and trips leaving out of the U.S., she'll be able to utilize her TSA pre-check and not have to take off her socks and sh with her shoes. <laughs> so that she's excited about that and i'm excited for her because you want to you you want to make your travel experiences so much easier and so um less stressful i have to say i have missed you guys um i didn't you know i was like what am i gonna talk about i got so much in my head that i wanted to discuss because i've done so much over the last few years and um but one of the one of the things I am going to be doing, as you'll see on my channel, is I'm going to be posting those room tours. I'm going to be posting um, my love, um, places that I've gone. I'm going to be doing those with people that I've gone on those, those on those trips with. And I want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity to ask questions and um, get information and. Um, even whether I'm your travel agent or not, I'm your travel agent. And I'm here to make sure that whatever your experience is, it's the best that it can be, even if you book yourself. I would love to book you, but let's just be honest. That's not going to always happen. And just because I don't book somebody don't mean I can't help them along their way and with their journey, and with their trip. And so I want to make sure that I, I give you guys that opportunity, give you that knowledge, that experience, help you figure out some things and educate you on, on traveling. Um, going through customs, different countries require different things. I was upset because I never did, like a lot of places, where's my passport stamp? Went to Cancun, they got a whole new um, customs deal, so up to date, so modern, better than a lot of our places here, ironically. And they give you this nice little printout, no passport stamp. You go back through, because you got to keep up with that paper. Still no passport stamp. And they take my paper away from me. Other than me spending my money on my trip. Well, okay. The resort was free because I'm a travel agent. However, I still had to pay for my flight and, you know, other stuff that I wanted to do. Where's my proof on my passport that I went to this location? I have my Dubai stamp. I got to have that. Thank God I had that. And when I asked if I can get a stamp because I was told that I could get one, the woman told me no because I had a piece of paper. Girl, I ain't keeping this. I'm not keeping this. Can I not have my stamp? I was so in my feelings. So in my feelings. I should have went in the other line where they was doing stamps. 
Mm-hmm. I should have went in line, but this it is what it is. I'm gonna see you again, Ken Cole. So I'm gonna know not to go on the other line. I'm gonna get in the other. I'm, yeah. You're gonna give me my stamp. You're gonna give me my stamp. So yeah, y'all can tell them in my feelings about that. <sighs> but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna also give you guys some tips on like some travel accessories that you can take with you to kind of make your trips easier and guide you through uh, simplifying um, your packing and um, making sure you don't take like unnecessary stuff on your trip. And because a lot of times we do that, we take stuff we just really don't need. And so I want to make sure I bless you with that information. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming with me, for being with me, for hanging with me today. I am going to come back next time I come back. I'm probably going to have pictures and videos and inserts and clips and stuff like that. Hopefully I'll finish having my space decorated like I want it to be. <laughs> And, and get that done. But in the meantime, y'all, thank you so much for being with Travel with Flair, with Takesha, um, your favorite travel agent. And if y'all have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me and let me know you have questions. I would love to answer them and assist you. Y'all have a great night and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Mm -hmm.